Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Real Estate Marketing Pros. Uh, this is Jacques Desrochers, also known as JD, um, with the Victory Team, and I'm going to be hosting uh, this, this episode. And what we do is we interview, uh, you know, top producing agents, uh, brokers, uh, appraisers, uh, title companies, anything that can help you grow your business, get some ideas and marketing and so forth. So, uh, and you're in for a real treat today because I have someone that has been in the business quite a long time, very successful, and his name is Rick Brankus from the Brankus team with his wife, Terry. Hey, Rick. How are, you? Uh, how are you doing, Jacques? Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm so excited to, to uh, speak with you today. Yeah, boy, you know, I think I'm going to say we've known each other for over 20 years. Um, I, I was going to say 25 years. Uh, that, that's yeah. All right. Definitely over 20. Yeah, uh, I've been in the fantastic. business 24. So, you know, I was fairly new and I worked with your team. And so uh, thank you for taking the time. I know you got your hands full. Um, but um, I, I'm sure you got lots of information that you can share with folks. Uh, you know, this goes to real estate agents. And so uh, that's what why we're doing this. But Rick, uh, for some of the people that may not know you, tell us a little bit about how you got in the business. I'm, I'm sure you grew up going to school thinking I'm going to be a real estate agent. That's what I'm going to do, right? But, uh, you know, about well, your well, team and all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so uh, in September of twenty three, I celebrated my thirty eighth year in real estate. So, oh my goodness! Uh, um, and so you and, started when you were twelve. Yeah, and that, that's 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 my story, and I'm sticking to it. So Terry and I, uh, my wife, uh, we've been working together for about thirty five years, uh, and um, she just really has a great knack for creating systems and uh, teamifying uh, everything. So. Um, uh, we've, uh, one of the things that we're pretty proud of is, is that we've been working together for 35 years and our team has averaged over 250 sales per year. And we've done that for 28 straight years. Wow. Uh, so, uh, stable markets, challenging markets, uh, we have a way. And, and if you can remember back 25, 30 years ago, uh, every single one of those contracts was presented live and in person. There was no such thing as DocuSign. There was no such thing as even fax machines. Uh, so, um, you know, it was kind of uh, really an anomaly uh, to sell 200 plus homes, um, you know, 25 Man. years ago. That's impressive. Yeah, that's uh, that's real impressive, especially keeping it steady like that. So um, you're a broker, correct? Uh, and uh, you know, so um, that, that's a great question. So uh, Terry is is one of the brokers uh, at the office. And then we we actually have a corporate broker that kind of runs. We have uh, um, have kind of uh, look at it as a, a, a two or three businesses. And I'll, I'll share on all three of those. Uh, so the, the first one is our Brinkus team, our sales team. And we're underneath the umbrella of Keller Williams. Uh, we happen to own four of the Keller Williams franchises here in Southern Nevada. I uh, have about 650 agents. Uh, so there's uh, four agents that I, I you know, do a transaction with or I meet at a continuing education class. We actually have two opportunities for them. One would be to be an agent at Keller Williams and all the wonderful tools. My goodness, it's uh, certainly enhanced our business. Um, I, I kind of uh, um, find out with people that join our team or, or join the company that the average real estate agent that joins Keller Williams does about six to 10 transactions more by simply embracing the tools um, uh, and you know, the, the very seasoned agents or the ones that really embrace them do far more than that with no additional effort. It's just a one-sided swinging gate just because of the, you know, when you have 170,000 agents around the, the country, uh, you get a lot of income and referrals. So some companies mm -hmm. that are, are not a national franchise, you miss out on that. You miss out on a lot of the training and educational opportunities. So that's one opportunity. Then the other opportunity would be to be a member of our team. Um, so our team, uh, we've got about uh, 12 uh, agents, um, some uh, it's staff in nature to provide service, and then uh, uh, some sales agents. So we've got um, on the listing side of it, uh, we've got my daughter, Bree, and myself are our two main listing agents. We've got another agent in training uh, coming in, and then our sales manager is kind of a backup uh, but about 90% of the listings that we take are, are either my daughter, Brie, or myself. So we've got an opportunity if somebody may be interested in really enhancing their listing skills, 
uh, and benefiting from a, a team uh, that people have seen our TV uh, commercials or radio commercials or seen our signs for years. And then we've got a team of about five buyer specialists. Um, and then we have two that are kind of in training uh, that are, are you know, haven't sold the home yet, but are, are, are coming along. So we've got opportunities there. And one, one of the great things, uh, you know, different about our team versus many other teams out there is a lot of them are internet based. And although there are some good leads that could come from the internet, what I find is you got a lot, a lot of fake phone numbers, a lot of people that are just searching uh, at lunchtime at work or, or when they come home uh, and you get fake phone numbers, fake email addresses. Uh, most of ours, we generally carry between 70 to 100 listings. So a lot of ours are sign calls that somebody has seen the house uh, mm. or the current seller that then wants to buy something. So super on the totem pole of leads, they're, they're top shelf. And then uh, after doing this for uh, 35 plus years, uh, we've got about 9,000 families that we've helped along the way. Wow, that's impressive. So that's that's kind of our second business. And then our third business, and, and I, I certainly encourage everybody that's in real estate, is you have an opportunity to buy the product that you're selling. Um, so over the years, I, I think we've got like 25 or 30 rentals, and that's a nice steady business as you look back over there, you, you buy one or two a year and you kind of look back after doing it for a number of years and, and you've got a nice nest egg uh, to kind of look forward to uh, uh, at, at some point, if you ever shut it off, I'm just having so much fun. I, I don't know if, if that's going to happen uh, anytime <laughs> in the short future. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, being on the loan side, of course, not everybody can buy right now. So, you know, they they may have to rent for a year or two or whatever, get everything straightened out and, now you've got some built uh, built in business for the future. You got to eat a year from now too, right? Oh, ab absolutely. And everything, uh, you know, that's that's so true. And uh, having a pipeline, uh, you have the now business and then you have the future business. And uh, it's a matter of, uh, you know, I could, you know, confidently say that that about um, 30 to 40% of the business that I do today is not that I talked to them today and we did business. It's that they've been in my pipeline uh, for somewhere six to 12 months that they've been ripening and mm. talking and just kind of moving them forward. And then ultimately that, that time hits um, and, and we're able to either help them buy or sell. So that really helps your team, obviously, because you've got stuff coming in all the time that, that you can uh, send it their way. That, that's good. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, we know what we've been going through. So two years ago, three years ago, when interest rates were so low, and um, of course, the market was quite different. You know, you had multiple offers. People were paying over list price and all that good stuff. So how did your business change? And, and how are your, you know, how did your numbers change? What did you do to try to uh, make that shift into what we're in now? Sure. No, that, that's a great question. So, um, you know, markets go up and down and uh, we try to be very steady. When a market gets super crazy like that, um, a lot of, of, of our clients will say, wow, this must be a fun time to be in real estate, just kind of as a casual. And quite frankly, it's it's not. Our average buyer um, back, um, you know, going back to two and a half years ago, would have to write 30 offers before they got a contract accepted. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them would have 8, 10, 12 offers on it. They'd be paying above list price. They were competing with hedge funds that were paying all cash. And it it um, you know, although the, the, the sheer volume of, of opportunities or so our, our numbers did swell, but it was a very challenging time to be in, in the market. E everything is challenging. Uh, you just kind of look for the solution on that. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when you say you have to write 25, 30 offers to get a contract accepted, um, you, you understand that you're going, that buyer is going through all of the emotions. They're picking up, the, the kids are picking up the bedrooms, uh, the backyard, the school district. And they say, yep, this is the one. And then you find out you've got a lot of offers. Uh, so, so there's, you know, strategies and that's what we look for in any market. What is the strategy that works? What is the marketing method that works the market of the moment uh, to attract business and then to be able to create a strategy that works to really benefit that buyer or seller that we're working with. Well, that's one of the benefits of being in the business so long, right? We've sure. seen a couple of ups and downs and different things. And, you know, for me, 24 years. And I mean, you're in 35, 38 years. And so, you know, we've seen the 2007s and 2008. Now we're into this. So you bring all that experience to the table. 
So what did you, did you have to shift anything when you got into this new crazy interest rates going up so quickly and having to handle the, uh, you know, well, I'm going to wait till interest rates go back down again, uh, you know, situation. Uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's a great point. So it, it's a matter of, and really in any market, what we like to do is kind of manage expectations and kind of share with them. I like to, you know, we have a, a presentation that we've developed for both buyers and for sellers, and it's a very educational uh, based uh, presentation to really help um get them information so that, that that buyer or seller can make an informed decision and also kind of set expectations of how quickly it's going to sell um, reasonably, you know, when you're submitting offers, you know, as a buyer in a market like that, you don't want to leave your best offer on the table and say, well, let's come in low and see what can happen. You, you needed to write a, a super strong offer uh, today in counseling buyers. Um, we find that there's, you know, Two, two and a half years ago, it was a vanilla 30-year fixed rate loan. And that was the only, only product uh, that we talked about. Today, there's a lot of 315171 arms uh, that, again, uh, through a question-based uh, uh, presentation, I was uh, speaking with someone last night that was selling and, and also buying. Um, I said, are you familiar with a 5-1 arm? Okay, can you tell me what you know about it? And and. Again, we're in the business every day and oh, adjustable rates, I think it adjusts every six months or 12 months. And it's like, well, no, that, the reason it's a five one arm is that you have a fixed rate for five years, then it starts going into the adjustable rate. So it's a matter of asking questions and not, um, th that's how you really uh, know that the person you're talking to understands is by simply asking questions. And that's a lot of our uh, presentation with both buyers and sellers is very educational based to make sure that they can they really understand and they can make a good informed decision. You must be using uh, the temporary buy downs as well, like two ones and three two ones. Again, absolutely. Uh, temporary buy downs. Um, I know that, that uh, you and your company have a great uh, program with reverse mortgages uh, that for the right person, that can be just a powerful tool. And it's a matter of educating them on what are all the options out there uh, so that again, that buyer can make a good informed decision. Yeah, I, you know, and and you probably know the answer to this, but just for the benefit of some of the agents that might be listening, um, a lot of agents I've spoken with, they think uh, they don't, they're not sure what happens to the money because, you know, if you do, I mean, let's just use an interest rate of seven percent. It's higher than that right now, but just for the math, so a two one buy down means that the first twelve months the interest rate would be at five percent, and then the second twelve months would be at six percent. Is a 30 year fix. So then after that, it's at the whatever you locked it in rate for the remaining up to the 30 years. Um, but the cost of doing a two one buy down is the exact savings from the payment difference, the principal and interest payment. So if it's at 5%, but the rate was really seven, whatever that cost is, that money goes into a pool. Same thing for the second year. So that's in a pool where the mortgage company, it the rate was at seven. So if you're paying a payment at five, we have to make up the difference and that comes out of that pool. Now the buyer, as you know, uh, can't pay for it. It has to be, and usually it's a seller. They just come in with some closing costs. We don't have to explain it necessarily to the seller, but um, it's just closing costs to cover it. But what happens, because we think interest rates are gonna go down. So what happens if they go down 12 months after you're in that and you're leaving on the table that 12 months you know, and most people don't know the answer to that. And it, of course, it goes to a principal reduction. The buyer does not lose that money. Yes. No, you see me started smiling and getting excited. Uh, that That is the beautiful part about that. It's it's the pool and it goes toward. So the buyer, when they refinance, they're actually going to end up not only getting a lower interest rate, but now they're going to have a lower principal balance as well. So that's, that's right. That's that, right. That's super exciting. Yeah, uh, no, if, that's if a good that two year period. If it's after that, then. Uh, you know, they've, they've had it. Uh, one of my uh, fun questions that I like to ask um, is, uh, and, and it, it, it kind of throws them back as it did last night in my conversation, just kind of replaying it in my mind. I said, so if we did a 2-1 buy down, um, what are the most important uh, 12 payments? And he was thinking about it. I said, well, it would be the first 12 payments. You may not be here in year 15 or 20 or 25, but you're probably going to be here in year one, right? And he goes, oh, right. 
So if your first 12 payments are the most important, wouldn't it be great to have those at five or five and a half percent? He goes, oh, that makes perfect sense. So I said, that's how that works. And, and it's an educational process so that they yeah. can make a good informed decision about what would be the best way to go forward. Well, it helps with the sticker shock, doesn't it? Sure. I mean, it right? I mean, you know, if for the interest, the payment at five versus seven, let's say, um, it certainly is kind of nice to have. <laughs> like you said, that's an important first 12 months. So yeah, that's sure. a good way to do, to do it. Um, I know that one of the other things is that to bring in and explain how the uh, appreciation has been going. I mean, right now, national appreciation is over 6%. What would you say the appreciation is right now? I know that every area and pocket may be different, but on the average, uh, what would you say the appreciation of a home in our market is? Yeah, so so that's uh, great news. And in Las Vegas, um, we burn a little brighter, um, you know, because of a, a lot of things that make Las Vegas attractive, the, the um, no city or state income tax, uh, the great weather, job opportunity. So a lot of people are moving here uh, compared to some cities that people may be leaving. So that's one, one thing. And when the market gets hot, we get blistering hot. Lots of investors come here and so on. And then there's always a little bit of a rebound period. So um, when you look back over the last, uh, say, two or three years, uh, the, the values have virtually doubled. I mean, there mm-hmm. were back-to-back years there where where the the appreciation rates were, you know, 20, 22 percent, then followed by 24 or 25 percent, and it you know, literally went right up. Um, as interest rates went up last year, and I've got it. This is all part of my educational um, presentation to both buyers and sellers. Um, once interest rates started going up, we saw the number of sales start to tick down a little bit. And we saw the tail end of last year, prices dropping two to 3% a month um, uh, from uh, June through December. Then all of a sudden January hit and it's been a kind of a steady ride up. And then now we've hit a little bit of a plateau uh, in the the filming of this is September of 2023, uh, hit a little plateau. So, um, you know, uh, again, it's um, all a matter of, you know, what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with inflation, all of those are important, but they're kind of white static in the background. The, the thing that really affects real estate uh, prices and values is supply and demand. Yeah. And how many homes are on the market? Our inventory is is a, a very good, stable inventory. It's down from where it was 12 months ago. It's up from where it was two years ago, uh, but it's a good manageable number. Uh, sales have kind of stepped back a little bit from where they were two years ago, but that was also kind of a a little bit of a runaway freight train and it's kind of returned to a little bit normalcy. You know, the average days on the market, um, you know, if you're saying that it's somewhere around 40 or 45 days, that is a normal market in my you know 30 plus years in real estate. If you told somebody it's going to take about 45 days to sell, that's, that's normal, right? What we had before was abnormal. And because it, it's, you know, stood around for um, several years, it seemed normal that if something didn't sell in two weeks, there's a problem. Same thing with the rates on my side, right? I yeah. mean, when I got in the business in 99, interest rates were in the eights. And sure. if you go back and you look at, you know, 40 year history or something, the average interest rates in the sevens, but you know, we're, we're spoiled and there's many kids, uh, you know, I call them kids, but you know, people that are buying homes now that may be in their thirties or something that never saw anything, but, low rates, uh, but it's not norm. And so now that there's adjusting, so you use that, do you use that? I'm sure you do, but um, does your team use that when they're talking to somebody and they're on the fence and they say, well, I think I want to wait till the interest rates come down. We've already heard the, you know, the reason not to do that because of you're going to be in a frenzy. You're probably going to be making 30 offers again and paying over list price once the interest rates drop probably a point and point and a half, that's that's that door is going to open. But for right now, what about the um, being you know losing out on the appreciation? So when you if you can qualify at seven and a half or high sevens, whatever it is today, if you can qualify there, and and now you look at the appreciation and your appreciation might be ten twenty thousand dollars, whatever that number is you're losing out on that, right? 
So, and and, and it happens uh, very quickly, right? Um, and again, I, I like to really ask questions and get the buy-in from who I'm talking to. But but um, you know, what would happen? I, I like to ask what would happen if interest rates all of a sudden went to four and a half or five percent. And the answer usually comes back that it would be a feeding frenzy. And again, we'd be back to that. As I, I talked a minute ago, having the right offers on 20 or 30 homes, people coming in above list price, getting competing with investors that are paying all cash, and you, you may have to pay more for it. So it's it's a, a, a saying that's become pretty popular in the last couple of years, and it's marry the house and yeah. date the rate. Yeah. Right? So if you were able to... Um, uh, and another thing I like to say is that you can have your cake and eat it too. What if you were able to find that perfect house and you didn't have to compete with 10 or 12 other people and you were able to use one of these other loan products that we just talked about? And if rates do uh, improve in the next 12 to, to 36 months, you have an opportunity to refinance and get a lower fixed rate house. So now you've got the, uh, the house that you want You've got the loan that you want. And, you know, again, it, it, it's it's through questions and it kind of leads them to a natural conclusion. How long are you going to be in this next house? And and the uh, answer I get for most people is that they're planning on being in there eight to 12 years. You know, so mm -hmm. what interest rates are today is not necessarily as important. I ask them what they've heard and according to what most economists and what, what you said, that, that they do believe that rates are going to improve in the next 12 to 36 months. So yeah. the opportunity to find that perfect house with a lot without a lot of competition and then get that great rate. Now you've got the best of both worlds. And as you said, once rates do come down, you're going to start seeing some appreciation because that's going to create demand going up and you're going to be able to be on the winning side of that because you already own the house. So and most likely you'd be seeing appreciation even in the short term. I mean, every year you seem to have a bit of a slowdown at least last couple of years this this time of year but as you said there's still some appreciation right i mean uh like you said supply and demand so the sooner you get in the sooner you you're, you're going to start uh, you know getting the benefit of that appreciation yeah it's, it's so funny um uh, gary keller has has just a great mind and comes up with some some really great creative uh, uh shirts he's got one that i, I like to wear when I'm traveling, it's called Think Like a CEO. It's a podcast that Gary Keller has. Um, uh, and it just invites a lot of conversation. But he also has a, uh, a, a, a T-shirt um, and it says, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. Oh, um, Because over, over time, forget about the short term, what happened in the last three months or even in the last um, year and a half. Over time, uh, the value tends to go up, your principal balance tends to go down. And it's the, 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 if you ever look at the net worth of somebody that is renting or somebody that owns, uh, it, it's about uh, 20 times more for the person that owns uh, simply because you're building. And then you also have tax benefits in between there and so many benefits of home ownership. If you want to paint a wall or you want to plant a tree or do whatever, if you own it, you can do it. If you're, if you're renting, you don't have that opportunity. So mm. it's uh, something that I, I believe in. Well, uh, it, it, share some ideas uh, since this is real estate marketing pros. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the marketing side. What are some of the things? I, I know you said that uh, because of the years you've been in business and how many units you do a year, uh, of course, you get a lot of referrals. But what else do you do? What would you say to somebody that's uh, either new or struggling right now? What would be the some of the advice that you would give them to to you know on the marketing side? Sure, great great question. So um, uh, for years, Terry and I have done client appreciation events, and uh, not only do you do a monthly mailer, I, I've started now doing a monthly um, market update, a video uh, that we email out to our people, and I I, I post those so people kind of what's happening, supply, demand, interest rates, um, you know, appreciation. Um, and, and all of those things. But with the client appreciation events, uh, we do five of them a year. And what we've done is we've opened them up to our office. So, um, you know, in the summer, we rent a, a pool and have, you know, um, you know, games, prizes, we've got food, and a lot of people are there and it, it just kind of opens it up. So, you know, if you were to do that individually, it would be very expensive. 
And that's just one of the tools a lot of our agents are able to invite all of their people. Uh, they come there and even if only two or three people show up, they're saying, oh my goodness. And they're saying, yes, this is one of the events that I do, right? We do a Halloween party, we do a uh, Easter egg extravaganza. And, and, and it just is one of those things that allows us to uh, connect with, with people. So um, past clients are no doubt uh, a super huge, important part of it. Um, also, uh, as I shared, we usually have about uh, 70 to 100 listings at any given time. And that brings a tremendous amount of uh, neighbors calling that they want to sell and they want to buy lots of lead generation. Um, the the um, What they call the gift of the gods, the real estate gods, is that when you take a listing, uh, you can possibly get two, three, or four pieces of business from that. Hopefully that seller is then going to buy something else. Maybe you get a sign call, possibly get a referral. Um, when you're working with a buyer, generally you only can get one or maybe two pieces of business. So we have a very heavy listing-based business, which uh, really feeds our business. And then um, uh, reviews are also very important. A lot of people are looking for those. And what I found um, is that if you wait until closing to ask for a review, even if the transaction went completely perfect and everything was great, people say, oh, Jacques, I'm, you know, Rick, I'm, I'm absolutely going to send a referral re review for you. They get busy. They've got to turn utilities on. They've got to you know, change mailing addresses, update all of their, their people, and, and their intention is good. I, I've stayed at restaurants and, or, or hotels and had great experience at the hotel or the restaurant. They've asked me to do a review, and in good intention, I wanted to. I just got so busy that then all of a sudden, a week, two weeks went by, and I never had a ch chance. So what I learned was after we get an accepted contract, their um, uh, uh, being happy and thrilled with the, the transaction is really at the peak and they're more willing and likely to at that point. So I've learned to mm -hmm. ask once it immediately, the home goes into escrow versus once it closes. Uh, so we like to ask for referrals three different times at the time that we very, we list a, a house, we ask for a referral then. We haven't even ordered the sign up, put it in the computer, but many times they've been talking with family, friends, coworkers, and a lot of times we'll get a referral maybe about one out of every three or four houses, even before we've started marketing it. Then we also ask for referrals once that home sells. And then of course, ask for referrals again at closing. And we ask for reviews once it actually sells. And we find we get more reviews that way, uh, better reviews. And um, we also are able to get referrals again by asking those three times. And then oh, those, are, those are the best, those are the best people to work with is a referral uh, because somebody's already, you know, had a great experience with you, and the person's already pre-sold, so that's a that's a huge mm. thing that I would would recommend that people do. So, if you were new in the business now, um, I mean, you recommend doing uh, open houses, or what's uh, what would be one of the things? You know, so open houses are are a great way to get business, and um, uh, in the book Shift that Gary Keller wrote. As a matter of fact, I think you can see a copy of it. Trying to get my thumb there, uh, right, right behind me, me uh, here. Uh, he talks about the twelve tactics uh, that an agent should do when a market starts to shift, whether it's improving or going the opposite direction. And um, uh, one of the things that they talk about in there is to do a seventh level open house. Um, so a lot of times people will decide to hold an open house. They'll decide within a day or two, or because a seller is complaining and they're saying, "Hey." Um, Nobody's looking at my house. Why don't you do an open house this weekend? They put a sign in the front yard, um, maybe a couple of balloons, and the, the typical open house, maybe you'll get one or two people through. Uh, there are people, I, I was just at a, a recent conference, uh, that are getting over 100 to 120 people wow. at every open house, but they do what they call a 10-level open house. In the shift book, Gary talks about a seventh level open house. So uh, what that is, is uh, one level would be that you put a sign in the front yard. Number two would be that you put, you know, 10 signs with directionals there. Number th uh, th third level would be that you have flags and balloons. Um, a fourth level would be that, that you have, uh, you know, 100 flyers uh, drawn up uh, and you knock on the doors on either side and all across the street inviting all of the neighbors. Um, uh, you know, another level would be that you create a digital flyer 
you post it on Facebook, you give it to the seller and tell them to email it out to people. You, you, you invite all of the buyers, irregardless of what price range that they're looking in, um, invite them to the open house. But as you can see, uh, you do a, a phone canvas to the neighborhood and you say, we're holding an open house here. Maybe you put a sign in the front yard uh, saying open house here on Sunday from 10 until two and all of the neighbors driving by. So let me just ask you a simple question. If you drive by a house and it's got a sign in the front yard, no flags, um, and nobody's walking in or out of the house, um, or you have uh, a sign in the front yard with flags, you've already passed five or six signs going there. You see cars on the street, people walking in, people walking out. Are you more likely to stop at the second open house or the first one? Sure, yeah, the one with right. all the activity. No, no, no brainer, right? So activity begets activity. So, you know, tap into the seller and their database to, to send that out. You send it out. And as you can see, what, what would a 10 level open house look like? What would a, a 12th level open house look like? And mm. you just keep ratcheting that up um, so that you get more people there. So um, open house or seventh or 10th level open house. I recommend the seven or 10 level open house. If you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah, right. I, 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 I interviewed um, a fairly new agent and he's doing open houses and uh, clever and very simple. And when he would knock on the doors and introduce himself, instead of pitching them and inviting them, what he would say is, I'm going to have an open house and there's probably going to be a lot of traffic. And so if somebody's parked and you need to have them move or just come on down, just let me know and I'll take care of it. Wow. You know, I mean, non-threatening, not a sales pitch, but a good foot in the door, you know, but I thought that was pretty clever. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it invites a conversation and that's what you have to do. You know, circuit test, uh, knock on this half of the street with saying one thing and then the other half saying something different. Where, where do you get better uh, feedback from the people. I, I love that. I've never heard that before, but I think, I think that's yeah. fantastic. I thought it was very simple, you know, but, and another one that I heard that might help some folks listening um, is that she would have a, a, an open house for an hour for the neighbors, like, you know, before the open house. So you yeah. have a pre-open house, a special showing for the neighborhood. I thought that makes you feel special, you know? Right. And if somebody's thinking of selling, who's going to show up at that open house? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so the those are two good ideas. Hard. And then and then there's another one, the last one I'll share. And uh, now this was probably a 15, <laughs> but she would have like a taco truck and a bounce house <laughs> and everything else. She said, you know, I would spend thousands of dollars, but, you know, it was a party. I mean, I would have 100, 150 people show up. And uh, but, you know, that's how I did it. And that's how I kick-started my business. I invested in the open houses. And boy, you know, like I said, I basically threw a party, you know, so, sure. yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, that that's a great point. And, and she probably didn't start out her very first open house with uh, having a bounce house. Right. It was, it was, you know, first you have to drive the traffic there. And then what can I do to get them to stay longer so that I can have a conversation and uh, you know, have the bounce house and then have tables set up outside for the parents to sit and watch and interact with them. And it gives you as an agent a chance to interact. So, um, you know, I, I would uh, also say that your database is super important. Mm. Uh, so every day um, I would I would coach agents to do a one five twenty. Don't end any day without having at least one appointment. If you do that every day, you'll have five for the week. If you take two days off and that'll be 20 for the month. If you do that, um, what are your skills going to be look, look like two, three months from now? If you went on, um, you know, 20, 40, 60 appointments, um, mm -hmm. and what's going to happen to your business? So if you just commit to the small things of having at least one appointment a day, and then commit to, to adding three people uh, to your database. I can remember years ago, Terry and I were going to a UNLV basketball game, and I said, I'm going to walk around. Uh, until I engage in conversations with some people that I know uh, went to high school here. I know a lot of people in town. I'm going to engage in conversation. I'm going to not only give them a business card, but I'm going to collect their information and say, would it be okay if I, I do these market updates to let people know what's happening with appreciation rates, interest rates, and so on. It's free of charge. It's very helpful. And then I just kind of 
carried something to take take notes with, and I, I just kind of look down and and know and, and what would be the best email address and your cell phone number, and you're going to get all that information. Uh, if I go Fine. to a, a friend's house uh, during football season, and there may be twenty or thirty people there, the conversation, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm in real estate. Oh, gosh, that's great. Well, hey, I do this uh, newsletter once a month. I, I do a, a video uh, update once a month, letting people know what's happening with appreciation, interest rates, supply, demand. Uh, would that be helpful? We do it free of charge. What would be a great address I could send that to? What would be the best email address? And you get all their, their contact information. So if you commit to adding three people to your database, follow up with them and uh, can commit to doing a certain number of appointments. Now, sometimes it's five o'clock and it's I didn't have an appointment, although I've been looking all day. On my way home, I may stop at a for sale by owner. I may stop at an expired listing, a withdrawn listing. And just knock on the door. Hey, I noticed at one point you were trying to sell your home. You've now taken it off. What are your plans? And you just kind of build that database. Uh, again, uh, as, as I shared with you earlier, sometimes it's that chance meeting that you have now, and they're not going to do anything till the spring. But now I've got them in my database. I follow up with them. And then when they're ready to list in March, who are they going to follow up with? And who are they going to list with? Oh, well, that's good stuff. I kept them informed. Yeah, especially not only do you have a goal, but you showed up with something to write with and write on. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been to events. I've got my business card. Oh, do you have a card? Uh, no, I don't have one with me. And then what? So sure. you showed up with something that you were able and, and prepared to take their information down. Hey, that's good advice. I hope everybody's listening to that. Sure. So, well, um, and and one, one of the things, rather than saying, can I get your email address, people usually that's a, a question that would repel somebody and they're saying, no, I don't want uh, you to be sending me a bunch of stuff. But if, Jacques, if I had some real important information I wanted to send to you, what would be the best email address? And you'll get their the best email address as opposed to if they did have a business card. Most people today don't carry business cards, but if they did, it will be their work address and there's probably spam filters and so on and your information yeah. won't go to them or if they switch jobs, in 12 or 18 months, now all of a sudden it's obsolete. Uh, by carrying something that you can write on, you're able to capture their information, get the, their cell phone number, get the, the best email address. So no, that's very good. That's very good. So um, we're, we're kind of at the end of our time. Um, what one last thing maybe that you want to offer as far as advice is, you know, uh, I mean, one of them I could think of, you know, because of your team is certainly hook up with a coach hook up with somebody that can coach you if you're new in the business. You know, some of the things you mentioned, they may not have a database yet or a small one, not one of previous customers anyway. So is there anything else, one last thought maybe that would be helpful to somebody that's a new agent or struggling or? Well, you know, I, I have a coach um, and I believe uh, several people on my team, uh, my listing manager has a coach. Uh, my ISA, the lead uh, member of our ISA uh, inside sales agent has a coach and my team's sales manager has a coach. So we, uh, you know, I believe in that. It's, it's a little bit like um, bowling with a big sheet in front of you. If you throw the ball, maybe you heard pins fall, maybe you didn't. If you don't get that feedback, and that's what a coach does, they help you see your blind spots and they see ways of kind of uh, slight adjustments, again, using that bowling analogy, a slight adjustment one or two lanes over could mean a strike versus uh, only hitting two or three pins. And mm. that's what a coach can do is help you. You're, you're obviously working hard, trying to do the best that you can. Um, and if, if anybody's interested as an individual agent uh, that's um, you know just curious about what tools we may have that could enhance their business, or if somebody uh, thinks that uh, you know, maybe being part of a team that all already you know has a, a big marketing budget and already has thousands of past clients. If that would be interested, uh, just over my shoulder, uh, I, I usually have that there. So whenever I I, I send a lot of video uh, emails and a lot of video text as well to clients. Uh, texting somebody is great. Um, and um, but when was the last time uh, Jacques that you got a, a video text? Yeah, not often. So, so I usually do it right here from my desk. It's got my number behind them. So it just kind of ingrains in as they're driving around, they see a sign. Uh, it's one of the things that I like to do. So that's uh, another really powerful technique. Use a variety, not only calling them, but texting them using video text 
as, as well as email. So a variety of techniques to, to work with them. So if somebody wanted to reach you, call that number, would you go ahead and just say the number? Yeah, us? sure. So uh, yeah, the, the Brinkus team, uh, uh, Rick and Terry Brinkus, 702-456-5959. Awesome. And uh, one, one of the things that we um, uh, didn't even realize, but uh, uh, sequentially in the alphabet, five is K and nine is W. So it's oh. 702-456-KWKW. No, that's good. And how about an email? What's the best email if somebody wanted to reach out to you? Yeah, the best one would be office at brinkus.com. Okay. Boy, R E N K U S dot com. Yeah, we'll post that on here also. But, you know, that's beneficial because this is a podcast and it's, of course, they're not going to be able to see it uh, on if they're listening to it on the podcast. Well, Rick, listen, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, I know we haven't seen each other in quite a while. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you and Terry are doing well. Now your kids have grown and look what, you know, now they're helping you with the business. They are, and they're, they're spectacular. Uh, uh, both uh, uh, were named last year for the uh, Las Vegas uh, Realtor Association. Both were for, named 40 under 40. Uh, um, uh, two of our three kids are working with us in the business. Our, our youngest is still at UNLV. So, you know, that, that's wonderful. And, and we open up our training, not only to our agents, but to all agents uh, across the Valley. So if you ever see a, a class or you have, uh, every month we probably do eight or 10 classes that can, again, help ratchet those up and we open those up to everybody. So uh, you know, love awesome. to get the information out there, provide better service for all those buyers and sellers and uh, just uh, help the whole real estate industry. Good deal. Well, say hi to Terry. And sure um, I look forward to visiting with you uh, some more. I'd love to be, we didn't get, we didn't really touch on the reverse mortgage side of it. Uh, but uh, for the agents there, we have reverse purchases, and that's something that you really need to find out about. So it's super, super valuable is a reverse purchase. A lot of people didn't know that that existed. And uh, just think about it, if you're working with a buyer, if you could add an additional hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in in the value of the home that they're looking at, in other words, a four hundred thousand dollar house versus a six hundred thousand dollar house, it could be a game changer. So. People need to find out about that. The more tools they have in their toolbox, the more powerful an agent's going to be. So that's a tool that they definitely should find out well, about. Well, 10,000 people a day are turning 62. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of people out there, if the people that were, and there's over $12 trillion in equity in homeowners that are 62 and over, $12 trillion. So we would not have a uh, a low inventory right now if they knew that they could sell the home that that is the wrong home for them and move into a home in an area that suits them better for uh, you know that they can age in and we would have more inventory. So it's uh, it's something to definitely talk about and I look forward to talking to you and your team about it. Thanks again, Rick. I really, really appreciate it. I know you're really busy and uh, look forward to talking to you real soon. That sound, sounds great. Thanks. Bye now. Right. Well, that was another great interview. Um, very knowledgeable, lots of experience. As you said, you know, 35, 38 years in the business. Um, I've known, uh, you know, Rick and Terry for over 20 years, 22 years probably. And, um, you know, they've knocked it out of the ballpark. And, you know, obviously, they made themselves available. Uh, they're always looking for agents that that, that want to grow. Uh, they even have a couple of new agents on their own team. So no matter where you're at in the business, I would at least have a cup of coffee with somebody there and, and reach out to them. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm a loan officer, so I do loans. And the my team is the, the Victory team. Uh, we're doing more and more reverse mortgages, reverse purchases. Um, my phone number is 702-219-1300. I'm with Movement Mortgage. Movement Mortgage is about sixth in the nation, 5,000 employees. We do loans in every state. And so, you know, we can certainly help you out or I, I'm here to answer any questions. My other contact information will be at the end of this video. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, all the success to you. And we'll talk to you soon and see you on the next episode. Take care now.